With all that being said, let's get <laughs> Hello everyone, what's up and welcome back to Hello AWS. Today we are going to jump into the world of generative AI and in this video I'm going to set up and use the AWS Bedrock Connector and use the Stability AI model to try and replicate the iconic Mendix logo using only text prompts to create the image. Before we get started, it's a good idea to make sure you have everything ready. You're going to need the AWS authentication module downloaded into your Mendix app. You will also need to have access to the model you are trying to call, which in our case is Stability AI. You can check this in the AWS console for Bedrock. It's on the left-hand side menu under Model Access. If you do have access, it will appear in green as access granted. Finally, make sure you have read and understand the AWS pricing guide for Bedrock because using this API will incur charges, although the on-demand pricing is quite reasonable for Stability AI at just 1.8 cents or $0.018 per request. With all that out of the way, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is to download the module into our app um, or the connector. So if you search for Bedrock, you'll find it here, um, but there's also an example implementation which you can download and check out. It, I found it very helpful when I was building this, so I definitely recommend that. But we'll just download the basic connector. Um, I already have mine downloaded, and once it is downloaded, it will appear a little bit differently. You'll find it here in the add-ons section. It's not under uh, marketplace modules, it will be under um, add-ons over here. As always, when using the AWS connectors, we need to set some constants. However, this module is slightly different as it has some protected IP and we can't directly edit the module. So to set the constants, we have to go into our app settings and edit the configuration for our project. Uh, you can go underneath constants and then just click new and it will open up a dialog uh, for the constants. So we simply need to select the constant and then set the value for it. So for the client certificate ID, we can just do one as always. And let's go look for the rest of these ones here. As always with these connectors, I'm using session-based credentials. To do that, I use roles anywhere to create a profile and a role in the console, along with a trust anchor, which I have a custom PEM encoded certificate for. So if we go into the profile, you can see we have a role here. I'll click into that. Now the role is the most important thing here. There are some special configurations you have to do on the role. So for one, we have a permission policy attached called Hello AWS Bedrock. And you can see this permission policy allows the role to act as a Bedrock user. I've given it all of the permissions, but you should really just find the one that you need, which is invoke model. Going back, I'll take you to the trust relationship. Now, this is very important because um, Bedrock is so new that the only way you can configure your role is to use a trust relationship here. So you need to edit the trust policy and paste in this JavaScript over here, uh, which will allow this role to act as roles anywhere and as the Bedrock. All right, so let's go and put all these details into Studio Pro. So we already set the client certificate, um, but if we open up session credentials, we can set the duration. This is just an integer value, which I'll set to 3,600, which is in seconds. Next, we have the profile on, which I can go and copy from the console. Paste that in there. And then we can do the same for the roll on. After all, we have session name, which I will just put to hello AWS Bedrock. This can be any name. And after that, we have, we have the trust anchor. Um, so I'll just go and get that. Now, while I'm doing this, it's very important to have all of these things in the same region and also to make sure that your region is available for Bedrock. As far as I know, the Bedrock regions are limited and Northern Virginia is the one I chose to use, which is US East 1. But yeah, so paste in the trust anchor on and that's everything except for the last one, which is the constant to say we aren't using static credentials. So over here we have use static credentials and we set that to false. 
Okay, as always, there's also a client certificate password and a path to my certificate, which is on my desktop over there. And this is standard for any AWS connector. You have to do this. So our constants are done. So that's all of the security taken care of. Next, we need to move into a microflow and actually invoke the model. So here I have a page which is set up just to accept a query string. Um, this is an unlimited string on my entity over here. And then I have a button which will actually call um, stability or uh, bedrock. And this is where we will do our work in a moment. There's also just a template grid over here. And this is just displaying the results that we get back um, after they're committed to the database. Right, so let's jump into this microflow and we will take a look. Okay, so there's a few things we need to do here. And I've written them in an annotation over here. So the very first thing we need to do, which is quite standard with AWS, is we need to create a variable for our region. So I'm going to create an enumeration and it's going to be of type region. But you need to make sure that it is in the correct module. So it, it has to come from this bedrock connector module. The others aren't compatible. We can click generate and we will then just choose our correct region. So after we have the region, uh, we need to get the credentials. Now this module does it a little bit differently. It doesn't actually call it for you automatically like the others, um, but it's very simple to do it yourself and I'll show you how now. So there is a microflow uh, called get credentials from constants, generate from constants. We'll just search for that now. So this only expects your region and then the rest of it is going to be taken care of by the constants we set in the app settings. So once we have our AWS region and we have our credentials, we're going to actually invoke the model. So to do that, we can go to our toolbox and we're just going to search for invoke, although you can find it other ways. And under bedrock connector here, we have invoke model uh, generic. If we drag this in, we can see that we have a few parameters that it expects. Um, we have two of them, so we'll fill them in now. We have the region and we have the credentials. Um, the last thing we need is the actual request that we're going to be sending to Bedrock. So to build this is actually very simple. It's just an entity and we can just create it with a create action. So we say create and that is invoke model. Uh, so the one we're looking for is invoke model generic request. Now this has a few parameters. The easiest way to get these parameters I found is to actually go into the bedrock playground. Uh, you can click get started over here and then click on the playground. And then here at the bottom, uh, you'll see over here it's model providers. Here at the bottom is a example request. Now I have copied them into my project, so it's a bit easier for me and I can just copy them from here. So the model ID is going to be this string over here, stability.stablediffusion. This is very important, the model number. So V0 is the one that we can use. B1 is not available in this uh, connector yet. So make sure that your version number is right, otherwise it won't work. After model number, we have accept, and I believe this is just application JSON, as well as the next one. Content type is also application slash JSON. The next one is the actual prompt that we want. So we can copy this in. Request body. And over here is where we can actually pass in our request. So this is a JSON string, which is going to explain to um, Stability AI 
what you want in your request. Um, so here where it says text and then there's uh, empty brackets, we can escape this and then we can add a plus and put in our bedrock holder slash the query. That is what the user is entering on the screen. And that will um, insert the user's query into the actual request itself. The last thing we need to do is to set the uh, save prompt. Um, you can set this to true or false, it doesn't really matter, but it is required, I believe. Now we can pass the new request into the uh, invoke model action. Give it a proper name and that fixes that error. Okay, now that we've actually invoked the model and got a response, we now need to handle the data and make sure it's stored safely in our Mendix app. So this uh, invoke model generic response is going to bring back a field um, that has the response body in JSON. So what we can do is if we copy that into a variable, just make it a string and it can be our invoke model generic response. Um, there is a field called response body. This is a JSON data structure, so we can apply a import mapping to just import that into a entity. So I'm going to choose import with mapping. I have a variable ready for it, request body, response body. And then I have a mapping already created. So import mapping bedrock response. If I go in and show you, I've only mapped the single field base64. There are other fields, but you don't need them for this build. So that's going to bring back a non-persistable object. And we only need the first one because it's going to be a single one. Give that a name. And now we have a workable object that has a base64 encoded string. The last thing we need to do is to convert this string into an actual image. So I have a action over here uh, from community commons. It's a Java action and uh, it's called base64 decode to file. This is a simple uh, Java action. It requires a encoded string, which is our variable that we created, and then a target file. So the target file is just an empty entity. So we can just create an object um, of generated image. That's an entity I created just to store the image. It inherits from system.image. And the important thing here is to, I, I copy over the prompt, um, so that can be uh, copied over. And then we need to set the association to our parent entity. We can then just commit and refresh our data. Now uh, for the base64 decode to file, we can supply the file document that we just created, and that is going to pass the string into that file and then hopefully commit it. The last thing we need to do is just to commit the image so that it shows up on the page, and we can do that with a commit objects activity. Now we can run our app and test this out. The app is running, so we can launch it and go have a look. So here's the screen we created for Bedrock. Um, here are some uh, examples that I've tried before. But let's try and give it a prompt um, so we can guide it to generate the Mendix logo. So the prompt I'm going to use is MX in a bold white font inside of a blue square with rounded corners. We can click generate image and it should trigger the breakpoint. There we can see it over there. And if we step over, we can see it sends a request. So after I click continue, um, we can go back to the browser and okay, it's not 100% there, but I'm sure with a few more refined prompts, we could get there eventually. But for now, that's all. 
Until next time, I'm Ryan Mockey, and this is Hello AWS Bedrock.